Hey, Man of the Mayhem here, and today we've got a really exciting video on the Kisu V4A development board by Rainwalker. This is a development board that is made to directly interact with the Flipper Zero firmware and hardware. So it's the closest thing we currently have to a direct Flipper Zero alternative, but for a much lower cost. So on the outside of the box, we've got this little glass window looking through to a sticker. We've got what's included in the kit, which is the board, an acrylic cover, a rechargeable button battery, which is an LIR2023, and there's also a small gift in there. Right, so let's crack it open. So first things first, we have our wonderful sticker, and if you look at that, you can see the details of the board. We have the actual Kisu logo, and we have the QR code that goes to their website. We then have this card here that tells us what the board is actually currently available to do. So we have the fact that you can do sub gigahertz, NFC, RFID, the I button, GPO, infrared remotes, Bluetooth, and it's Flipper Zero compatible. Once again, we've got the QR code to the documentation as well. This is our free gift. So this is the Kisu logo. Uh, this one's in a lovely 3D printed pink, a little hole here to put it onto a keychain. So ever so snazzy, thank you very much. Now we have the money shot. This is the board itself. So I'll just pop this down here. And then underneath this last piece of foam, we've got a acrylic cover, which just pops over the top of the board, held on by an elastic band or a hair bubble, just to protect it whilst in transit. And that goes on just like this. The elastic band seems to work really well if you put it over this section here, where you've got this nice full section between the SD card and the bottom of the board. So let's remove this battery tab and let's have a quick tour of the board. So I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way and we'll try and zoom in a little bit. So I've got my little stylus. Here we've got our button battery for that is rechargeable. Make sure you get the right type here. We have got our full size GPIO, which can fit all Flipper Zero boards in. We've got our directional key. So we've got up, down, left, right, select and back. We have a little power button that you push at the top here to turn the board on. We have the lovely Rain Sun name logo here. SD card holder. This is one of the spring loaded ones as well, so you don't have to pull the card out. You just push it down and it pushes it out for you. USB-C for charging. We have our display here. We have our eye button pins here for doing our eye button readings. We've got our infrared receiver here and our infrared transmitter here two bulbs for each one there. And if we look really closely just here, this wiggly line here is our CC1101 for our sub gigahertz. And if we turn the board over the back, we have a lovely description of all the different GPIO that are available. And we can also see the pattern for the NFC card reader. So first up, I'm just gonna put a preloaded SD card on there. This is my lovely new Revit Labs one. And like I say, you can just push this down and it goes in ever so nicely. Then we'll push the power button here. And as you can see, it starts up. So just out of full transparency, I have had this out of the box. I have played with it. I have flashed different firmwares to it. And I've now come back to the original Kisu firmware. Uh, hence why we now have the Kisu cat and no other animation. So I do need to add some more animations back to the card as I'm currently stuck with just the Kisu cat. But it is also adorable, so I don't mind it so much. Right, so let's test some of the functionality out of this board. So we're going to start off with sub gigahertz. So I'm just going to crash it straight into the frequency analyzer and I'm going to send the classic Tesla door opener. So there we go, that seems to be working quite nicely. Uh, let's just take one of the other frequencies and see if it picks that up. Yep, seems to be doing okay across the band. So just pick one more. Snazzy. So that seems to pick up all three of those. I don't have everything with the 125 kilohertz RFID at the moment, but I do have some NFC, so let's give that a go. Once again, the NFC coil is on the back here, so I should just be able to slot the card underneath. And it should hopefully start reading. There you go, that's read that as a MIFO classic. Let's give it a try with another card as well. Mm-hmm. 
Took a little bit longer on that one, but once again, did work perfectly fine. So that looks like that particular feature is working quite nicely. Let's see if we can try and emulate one of these cards to the flipper next. So let's give it a read. There we go. So now let's go to more, emulate. And if we grab our flipper, we can hopefully try and clone this card from the card that was cloned. So I should hopefully be able to just stick the flipper on top and read it through the noise of the board. Definitely struggling with the noise for the actual rest of the board, but there we go. Yeah, it's actually copied the card. So we can see that it is actually emulating and it is also reading. Next up is infrared. So let's pop down to infrared and see if we can see the lights working. So universal remote, TVs, and then let's start sending that. So the light should be coming from just here. So let's see if I can put something reflective nearby to see it. So my lights are quite bright. Let's see if I can just point it directly into the camera. You can just see them there. There you go. So you can see the infrared LEDs powering on and off there, sending all the different signals. So the RI sender is working nicely. Next, we're going to see if it can learn a new remote. So let's see if the receivers are working. So for this, I'm just gonna use my flipper again and just have it off screen. So for this, I'm just gonna use my flipper and hopefully send a signal and it should now pick this up. And it has, so as you can see, that is also working now as well. Superb. Next up is GPIO. My plan for GPIO is to eventually put some header pins on the back of the card. So it won't fit as flush, but I'll be able to put dev boards on the back. But what I will do is I will show you some of the different orientations that you can put them into so that they'll work. So next up is GPIO. So at the moment, it's, it's all just set up manual as per the normal flipper firmware. What we should be able to do though is line the pins up this way and the device should actually fit in like so. So we can either orientate the device this way or if we have it on the back of the card, it will be orientated this way. So like I say, I'm probably gonna get some standoffs that will allow me to put boards on and off without having to actually solder anything or hold things in place. But that'll be a future video. Next we have iButton. Unfortunately, I have nothing that can test iButton. We've got badge USB. We've then got the U2F, which doesn't work due to a certificate error. We've then got our settings, which are the same as the settings on the standard flipper. And we have the apps as well. So in the apps at the moment, we've got all of our Bluetooth, GPIO, and all sorts of that sort of stuff. So as far as an initial rundown on the Kisu V4A, that's all I've really got for you. I am hoping to put some other firmware on this in future to kind of uh, ramp it out and get it to match this functionality of my flipper and have momentum on there and such. I also want to build out the GPIO pins with a nice header so the pins can just slot in and out. It will take away from the really, really thin form factor but I think it will just increase that functionality tenfold. I really feel like having a permanent Ghost ESP sat on the back of this board would make it a phenomenal piece of kit, being that in the smaller footprint in the Flipper Zero, you can have all of the Wi-Fi pen testing tools, as well as the external SD card, all ready and raring to go in a very small footprint. But that is all for a future video. I hope you enjoyed this and once again thank you so much to Rainwalker and Kitsu for sending this out to me to have a look at. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will catch you next time. Happy hacking!